to begin, let's just try to set the stage on this whole Silverlight platform. Right? What is this thing called Silverlight? And I want to begin by talking about something that we've actually had out for a while now. And that would be WPF, right? Windows Presentation Foundation. When .NET 3.0 was first released, it was kind of an oddball release <coughs> because it was essentially just, well, four APIs, but three core APIs. WPF, WCF, WF, right? Those three APIs sat on top of the existing 2.0 platform. So the languages were unchanged, right? C Sharp and VB were still the same as they were under 1.1 or 2.0. Now we got all this new technology stacks. And essentially what Windows Presentation Foundation is, is sort of like a supercharged API for building desktop programs, right? And there would be the operative word, desktop programs. You're trying to build executables. They get deployed to an end user's machine, they double click on something, it fires up, and there's your application, right? Now you might say, well that's kind of strange because I was doing that same thing for many years using Windows Forms, and that's true. Right? WPF doesn't mean that Windows Forms is now deprecated or dead or doomed or dying, but they serve very different purposes. You know, as some of you might know, one of the big motivations behind WPF was to integrate all these different technologies into one object model. So using WPF, you can have access to animation, two-dimensional graphics, three-dimensional graphics, a new data binding engine. Right? So instead of having to use all these different APIs, GDI Plus, Windows Forms, etc. We just get one cohesive unit, right? Another huge thing about WPF is the fact that it introduced this XML-based grammar, XAML, right? And that gave us a clear separation of concerns. XAML describes essentially the look and feel of a window. The code file behind it drives all the functionality. So to that level, it feels similar to building a web program with ASP.NET, right? We got an HTML file over here, we got a code file over here. Well, WPF is re replicating the same idea for the desktop. Now, with this release of XAML, a couple things that you should know about that, and you'll see why I'm bothering to talk about WPF in just a second. Okay, don't worry, it is actually about Silverlight. XAML is, as I said already, this XML-based grammar. And a lot of people think that XAML is only for WPF. They think that XAML is only for describing the look and feel of graphical widgets, you know, buttons and menus and list boxes and graphical blobs. And that's not true. In reality, XAML can be used to describe any .NET object. There are a couple of small provisions, like it has to have a default constructor, really limited support for describing generic items, but if you had your own custom class, you could model that in markup, right? Now, very similar again to ASP.NET, XAML is totally an illusion, right? At runtime, it doesn't exist at all. All that markup is fed into this full-blown object model, right? And that's actually what's gonna be executing. In fact, once a WPF program has been authored, the XAML files are typically irrelevant. Right? You don't have to ever ship along with your program a bunch of XAML files, except if you're trying to do things very dynamically. And the reason is that XAML becomes BAML, <laughs> which is just a binary version of the same exact stuff. And that's typically embedded as a resource right inside of the assembly. Okay? Now again, why is this XAML so useful? Well, remember one of the big motivations of WPF was to have an integrated unified way right, to build up a very feature-rich desktop program. And so that means with just a miraculously small amount of markup, without any code whatsoever, you could define this fully rendered 3D setting, right? You could define an animation sequence. You could define really complex, elaborate data bindings. And that's a pretty compelling feature because writing the same kind of stuff in procedural code would be quite cumbersome in some cases. Okay. The downside of XAML is, is true for any XML-based grammar though, right? XML is very tedious and very verbose and very error prone. And the truth of the matter is Visual Studio all by itself doesn't have awesome, awesome support for authoring XAML. You can do it, right? You get some IntelliSense. You get a properties editor that does some things for you, but there's no integrated support in Visual Studio to say, I want to 
you know, use these tools to render out this animation sequence. And that won't happen. Okay, if you want to render out an animation sequence using Visual Studio, you're typing on your keyboard, right? So what happens in WPF development is that there's actually this other IDE that some of you might know about or have heard about called Blend, right? And I always kind of say it this way. Think of Blend as sort of like a Photoshop-like tool that generates XAML, right? The Blend product is really geared towards the graphic artiste, right? Programmers can use it, but I think you'd probably agree, if you're anything like me, you probably don't want me to do your interior design, right? You don't want me to pick out the best wardrobe. And you don't want me to put together the awesome, you know, 3D rendered toolkit, right? I'm more about programming that kind of stuff, not necessarily making it look all pretty. So we have this big collaboration when we're doing WPF and Silverlight. Typically, we use two tools, right? If you're lucky in your company, you have somebody who's really good at graphical arts. And they could use a tool like Blend to generate the really pretty look and feel of what you're trying to build. And they would use Blend to do that, right? We programmers can open up the same exact project in Visual Studio and add all the code, right? So that XAML becomes very important for that reason, too. Right, this kind of separation of concerns, not only at the code file level, but at the tool level. Now, to make things more interesting, right, remember we just said now, WPF is all about desktop executables. That's what it's geared for. Unless you're talking about an XBAP, right? WPF has a different programming model that could be used if you want to. And what you are able to do in this deployment model is to have these page objects. And think of a page object as like a lightweight window that can't be hosted by itself. It has to be put inside of a container. Okay? And one of the containers that it could be put inside of is actually a browser. And with the release of 3.5, they can actually be put in two browsers, right? IE or <laughs> Fox, not Firefox, Firefox or IE. Right? But understand that an XBAP application is not a, an ASP.NET program, right? An XBAP has no native web knowledge. It's just simply a page on the web server. When somebody requests access to that page, the page plugs into the browser. So it's kind of like, remember the ActiveX document technology from years ago? Okay, it's that idea, but now it actually does useful things. <laughs> okay? But don't get confused. This is still, you're still doing the same type of code you would do if you're building a window, right? It's just now instead of being put inside of a pretty frame, like we see here, right? We have a page inside of a browser. But it still is not an ASP.NET program, and it's not a Silverlight program. So far, so good? 